Hi gang! In this video, I'm going to go over how to create a seamless diagonal pattern using Adobe Illustrator. And just a reminder, if you find these videos helpful, please like and subscribe. All right, let's get to it. To save time, I've already gone ahead and created a stripe in Illustrator. And now we're going to talk about how to turn it into a diagonal stripe. The first thing we need to do is rotate it. So I'll select it, double click on the rotate tool, type in 45 degrees and click OK. Now that it's rotated, we need to know the size of this kind of as a diamond shape. So we can go over to the transform panel and where it says W and H, that's the width and height of this current shape. You can copy either one of them since they should match since I made my stripe pattern in a perfect square. Doesn't matter what size the square is as long as it's a perfect square. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this, Control or Command C, and then I'm going to hit Enter to release. And now we're going to change the size of the nudge keys on your keyboard. To do that, we're going to go up to Edit, Preferences, General. And you can see the shortcut for this is Control K. When it opens this window, it automatically highlights the keyboard increment. And that number is the amount that your arrow keys or nudge keys on the computer work. I'm going to paste the amount that I just copied from my transform. But I don't need the full size. I actually only need half of this size. And so I'm going to divide by two. You can do math in these windows, which is very, very handy. So to divide by two, I'm going to type in forward slash two, and then go ahead and click OK. And now my nudge amount is set to half of the width of the shape. So you can see if I nudge it over, it moves just a half. So now what I need to do is make some nudged copies. I'm going to hold down my Alt or Option key and nudge over one. Then release the key and nudge up. Then hold the Alt or Option key again and nudge over. Release it over again. So you can see what I'm doing is just moving the shape around so I can create kind of an X. Let's zoom out a little bit. I'm going to group this whole thing together. And I need to make another square. So I'm going to go to my rectangle tool, click on the page, and this time the size I want is the size that I copied earlier from transform, but I don't need to divide it this time. So I'm just going to paste in each of these windows the original number that I copied and click OK. So I've just made a rectangle that, or a rectangle, a square, that's my original size. I'll hit D for default just so we can not be distracted by the stripes. All right, I'm going to select everything now and align it to the center of my page. So you can see I've set my align to artboard instead of selection. And we'll just click center, center on align. There we go. And now everything's aligned center. Let's go ahead and take a look at the layers panel now. I'm going to change the options here. Open this over here to other. I'm going to type in 60 so it makes it just easier to see what's going on. So here in my layer, you can see the stripe I created with the box on top. We'll open it up, and we need to drag this square beneath the stripes. And it's also really important that this particular square has no stroke and no fill. So over here in the toolbar, I'm going to remove the stroke and the fill. So if you look in the layers, you see I have my X of stripes and then my rectangle with no stroke and no fill. The next thing we need is the swatches panel. I'm going to select everything on my page and I'm going to drag it into my swatches panel and that just created a diagonal stripe seamless repeat pattern. So now all I need to do is create a rectangle of the size I want my final output to be. So let's say we need it to be 10 by 18. I'll type in 10 inches by 18 inches, click OK. And now all I need to do is fill this with the stripe that I just created, and I have a perfect seamless repeat diagonal stripe. All right, let's do it one more time, but this time I'm going to show you with a plaid. So let's go over here and close out the stripe that I made and open the plaid. And we're going to do the exact same thing. I'll select the plaid, and I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees. I need to get the size of the plaid, so I'm going to go to my transform panel, 
copy the width or the height, Control or Command C, hit Enter to release, go to my preferences, which is Control or Command K. We're going to paste in the number I just copied and divide by 2, forward slash 2, click OK, and now I can go ahead and hold my Alt or Option key and then nudge it over to make a copy. Nudge it up, over, over, down, down, over, over. All right, I'm going to group it together. I'm going to make that new square that is the size of my width and height. So we'll just paste and paste because I've already copied it. Click OK. Let's make that default again so it's not distracting. We're going to select everything and align center, center to the artboard. We'll select just that rectangle, drag it behind. Make sure it has no stroke and no fill. And I just said that backwards to what I clicked. And we can select the whole thing and drag it in to that swatches panel. And now one more time, all I need to do is draw a rectangle for the size I want. So we'll do, um, we'll do 10 by 18 again. 10 inches, tab, 18 inches. Click OK. And now all I have to do is go to my fill and click on the pattern I just made. And it didn't work which sometimes happens. So let's go back and make sure I did everything correctly. We'll open this up, and I need to make sure that this rectangle really had no stroke and no fill. And if I go back and take a look, you can see it still has a stroke and a fill. So I goof there. So we're gonna go back and make sure it has no stroke, no fill. I'm going to select everything again, drag it into my swatches, and I can actually see by the look of the swatch now that it did work. So we'll go back to the rectangle that we created and select the fill and fill it with the repeat. And you can see I have a perfect seamless repeat plaid. So I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you next time.